Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, is the JMS cap run filler? Okay, let's read this note. It says, Dear Perch, yesterday I went to my LCS to pick up my poll list, and I caught up the last two issues of the current cap run, Captain America, of course, by uh, JMS. Pretty good read, but there was this lingering thought as I went to sleep. Is there going to be anything beyond the current storyline of Cap fighting this demon in the present and the parallel storyline of that of a teenage Cap in the 30s? There seems to be nothing layering beyond the corner after this. There is nothing really to set up a future arc, nor any supporting cast that are heroes. The only two pre-established supporting cast members of Cap that have shown up are Arnie Roth, childhood friend from the Dematis run, the Mateus run, and Sharon. What's going on with Barney or Rachel? And Bertie's dead. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. This run just feels like a 12-issue mini and not something to last for 50. I want subplots. I want something to look forward to for years to come. Not this short-term run that's good, but kind of feels like filler. Yeah, that's what this run is. Filler. But filler for what? Uh, so, I, unfortunately, I mean, that's, that's a harsh, but I think accurate critique of the story. The story is fine. Um, I know people who are generally liking it okay, and people who think it's pretty much garbage. But the people who say it's garbage, you know, don't have anything major to point to. Like, it's not like the character's written wrong. It's not like, uh, you know, totally it's off. It's it's what you're mentioning as male. It just doesn't feel like there's anything to it. And, I, you know, not knowing behind the scenes on this particular book, um, my suspicion is that basically uh, JMS was told you've got you know, six to 12 issues. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll sign you up for six issues an extension to 12 and uh, just write to that. And so JMS is trying to write a relatively self-contained six to 12 issue story. And that's what we have. This is not the uh, start of a 50 issue arc. By its design, it is, hey, write these, uh, these issues, these, you know, this, this 20, this, this 12 issue series. And if it does real well, then we'll extend it. And, you know, look at the, uh, you know, for that matter, look at the, what, the Kelly and Lanzig, the, the last one with the, the mystery of the shield and the stars. That was another one that had no real relevancy, you know, beyond kind of this fairly self-contained story and what they're doing with, you know, Bucky and so on. And it all just kind of wrapped up tight to tidy. Um, that was also 12 issues, wasn't it? Or, if, I mean, if, if it was more than that, it wasn't much more than that. It got kind of an event shoved out the end. But that's, um, that's how Marvel is doing comics now. So, you know, take what we're saying here, and it's, it's all the comics. Not just Cap, they're all this way. You know, the new Daredevil run, does that feel like a, you know, the, you know, a lengthy run? It, 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 it doesn't. There's a hook and a relatively self-contained story, and that's what we got. Um, I, you know... I think that's that's how Marvel has mostly been for a while. Now, The Amazing Spider-Man is different because it's a flagship title. Um, this Death of Moon Knight... I mean, here's a funny thing. I'm, I'm seeing all these videos of people really pissed about, you know, they put a black lesbian in charge. Um, is she a lesbian, though? I don't... I, I mean, I've been reading this run. I didn't think they actually said... Maybe they said something. I, I don't know. I, I missed it. Could very easily have missed it. But that, that's neither here nor there. The, the, the question mark, though, is... Who is the new Moon Knight? And the answer to that question is, in the grand scheme of things, who cares? Because it will be Mark Spector again. If you honestly believe that Mark Spector is dead, will not be coming back, and this is there will be a new Moon Knight for longer than a blink of an eye, uh, you're nuts. They did the death of Stephen Strange, and uh, this this comic, um, you know, led to the brand new, all new, all different Doctor Strange, which was Clea. And that series lasted for less than 12 issues. I, I'm trying to remember at what point they revealed that Stephen Strange was still alive and kind of operating this under guys. I, I believe that was less than four issues in. Might have been issue three that they revealed this, or two. So, I mean, all this is is short-term, kind of, I would say, stunt writing, but it's not even that. It's it's filler writing. This story, I, as I said, I, I think it's, I, I mean, I'm, I'm reading it. It's, it's more or less fine, but there isn't any attempt at subplots um and if, for that matter if you do talk to people at marvel they will tell you that a lot of editorial will push against subplots will will specifically provide notes against them they don't want that 
And it's all about like, look, this comic, uh, it's, it's for dumb reasons. It's like, well, if we need to reboot this comic, we don't have a bunch of dangling plot threads because nobody likes those. Look, there's still plot threads from the Claremont era that never got resolved. And that's fine. That's, that's kind of the price you pay for comics. Nobody is really expecting all of these. Um, uh, there's a terrible smell outside the car. We're going up past an Arby's. That's what's going on. Anyway, there, nobody's expecting that these, um, these comics are going to wrap up every single plot head, every single option. Nobody with any intelligence anyway. It's so it's, it's fine, but editorial doesn't want you doing that. They also, there's this belief that subplots and kind of Claremont storytelling in the eighties is uh, harmful for new readers. The people will find it too confusing, too dense, difficult to get into, and they won't go for it. And so that's, that's basically where we're at. That's, that's how the world's operating these days. Um, I, I, you know, short-sighted. Yeah, for sure. Um, not in touch with the audience. Yes, that too. But I mean, you could just kind of tell that a lot of the comic writers today are being told, you know, give me six solid issues. Maybe we'll extend to 12 and, you know, call it a day. And as a result, choices that get made are strange choices. They are, you know, limited. They don't involve a, a supporting cast. They don't try and set up other things. And any way you look at it, this is not healthy to Marvel's bottom line. A lot of the logic here, there's another big argument that says if you put a lot of subplots in, it will hurt the trade sales. But another way to look at that is if there are subplots that make their way into the trade, then people are likely to buy the next trade. And it's not like you have to take this on faith. Manga is got, I mean, a, a, a bazillion subplots and are selling trade after trade after trade. So this is all of this makes no business sense whatsoever, but in comics, we're, we're pushing forward with it anyway. Uh, Captain America is a character who's central to the Marvel Universe, should be having subplots and enemies and and, tie, and all this kind of stuff coming out of the woodwork. There, there should be dozens of enemies scheming about what to do with him. There should be Avengers drama. There should be all kinds of stuff that's going on in Captain America. And so it's it's nuts that you have a Captain America book. Again, this is a central character in the Marvel Universe that doesn't have other things going on in it. That's just fundamentally wrong. So I, you know, th this is this is the issue with um, with with again, we can pick on Cap here, but can you say that things are much different in almost anything? Writers are kind of asked to come in now and do a completely contained, you know, universe within the comic they're doing. You know, look at Venom. So Venom is uh, with King of Black, Donny Cates, you know, to his credit, I'll give him the guy a compliment. He, he tried to elevate Venom as a more major Marvel character, interacting with the Avengers, the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. They knew who Eddie Brock was. They knew who Venom was. That, that was part of what that event did. And so how did you follow it up? Well... You took Venom, you, you did this very sci-fi, traveling through time, different entities of Venom. His son's got a Venom. And uh, you, you know, where there are there any Avengers? Are there any anything? It's uh, it, it took the character right back into a silo. And and that's, uh, look, I mean, all, like the Fantastic Four right now, they're doing their own Avengers again. Okay, fine title, everything else. But this is Marvel's first family. You should see these interactions. And that's one of the big changes from the 80s and the comics back then is you would see these characters, certainly they had their own adventures and everything else, but, you know, even if it was very, very small, during the Burn Fantastic Four run, you'd see, like, uh, you know, some somebody screwing up New York or yeah, and and uh, Spider-Man would go swinging by, like, holy shit, looks like something's going on at the Baxter building. And it was just those little touches as, as you know, brief little kind of cameos that made a huge difference. And there was also the, here's something that may be coming up in like 20 issues. And that keeps you hooked and keeps you writing. It also makes the universe feel bigger. So, you know, th these are all things that, that in theory should be very easy to do, build upon the universe and make things, you know, bigger, stronger, better. But, you know, for very, very weird reasons are just not done today. And I, I get, I, I do not have an answer. For why? Anyway, thank you very much for the mail. Uh, a shame about this series. I, I do agree. It's, and that's a, that's the other hell of it. It is 
not a bad comic series. It there's nothing like you know you, you, there's, it's not terrible. It's not bad writing. It's perfectly cromulent. It's 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 everything you know. It's there. It's just does it matter? Kind of like those other videos I posted. Does does any of this really matter? And you know it. It's hard to say yes. I mean, I'm not discounting the idea of just like tell a good story. Not every story has to be a giant epic. Just have a good, you know, a good story. But you can have a good story and you can also feed a bigger picture. And doing the two right feels like something that comics have to do. You agree? Don't agree? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for listening.